Welcome back you Daniacs, we're back from Great Dane Care. Today Gus and I have a special video for you about tips to make your walk safer with your Great Dane. Now whether it be the dog days in the heat of summer or COVID, we've noticed at least around our neighborhood that a lot of people are spending their kind of core hours where they take their dogs and their pets on walks in the evening when it's a little bit cooler. Now this is great of course to get out and get exercise, but it does oftentimes mean that there's a lot of kind of close encounters with strange dogs and other things that might potentially lead to occurrences where, you know, even though our gentle giants are the sweetest dogs in the world here, they could be accidentally bitten or attacked by some other dog who's just not quite comfortable passing close to them. So we'll be covering, once again, a couple tips about how to make these walks safer. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, my name is Zach and this is Gus, and we're from greatdanecare.com and it's our kind of mission to help empower families and owners everywhere to take better care of their Great Danes so that everybody gets to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. So if this is something that resonates with you, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to our channel down below so that way you don't miss out on any future videos. Now, once again, whether it's COVID or just the fact that we're in the middle of summer, so everybody tends to be walking their dogs a lot in the evening hours, we've more and more noticed that there are a lot of kind of close encounters between yourself and your dog and other strange dogs that could potentially lead to encounters that don't turn out well. In fact, we were actually talking to another friendly neighbor the other day who told us that their dog has been attacked on several occasions. Um, so this is something that obviously it's not a good turnout for anybody. So if possible, there are different ways to help mitigate this. And I always like to be the, or take the proactive approach to help ensure that, you know, my dog isn't accidentally bitten. Um, now in certain cases, sure, maybe it's their owner's fault. Maybe they should have socialized their dog better, but virtually in every circumstance, I would rather just take the necessary steps to help avoid these situations or prevent them from occurring if possible. Um, so we'll kind of jump into those. Uh, but before we do so, it's kind of worth, you know, keeping an eye out as to, you know, what is a good indicator that you should kind of take some of these proactive steps to avoid a close encounter. Now, most dogs out there are, you know, pretty well socialized, but there's no guarantee, especially if you've never met another dog, that they're going to do well in a close encounter with a dog as large as a Great Dane. Now, as you're out on the walks with your Great Dane, some other signs that you may notice as you are kind of approaching other dogs, that they may not be the best trained, the best socialized, um, could be a few of the following signs to kind of give you these key indicators or tips that you should kind of take some evasive actions and out of a close encounter. Um, first and foremost, if you notice the dog is just straining at the leash, just literally dragging their owner down the street, that's a pretty good indicator that they either haven't been spent enough time training or they're not well enough socialized to understand what proper leash etiquette and manners look like. Um, so that's probably a dog that we don't want to, especially if you don't know them, bring into a close encounter with your Great Dane. Um, other indicators, of course, maybe they're not straining, but they're just walking really far ahead of their owner. Oftentimes that sets up dogs for a more uh, protective kind of dominant stance where they may want to preemptively kind of lunge out or bark or try to bite at a Great Dane or really any other dog that's passing just because they're trying to protect their owner. So dogs that are of course cal calmly walking next to their owner is a much better state there. Um, as you get closer, if you notice that the other dog has the hackles kind of hair raised up on the back of their neck and their spine here, if they've got their ears pinned back or their tail is tucked really low, these are all great visual indicators that you know, they're probably not comfortable with your Great Dane. They may not be, not necessarily that they're aggressive, but they're just probably uncomfortable in the situation. And once again, a pretty good sign that you should do something to not have your Great Dane pass so closely to them. Obviously, if they're barking or snarling or kind of making other more verbal, aggressive sounds, also great indicators that you should take some steps to kind of have your dogs not pass so closely there. So with those key indicators out of the way, that's a great way for you to kind of understand if you don't know a dog, what to look for and listen for to determine, okay, do I need to do something you know, special to help avoid these in close encounters here? Um, now, if you do determine that, you know, okay, this is probably a dog that we don't want to, you know, pass too closely to, the easiest and simplest option, especially if you're walking on the same side of a sidewalk here, if there's any grassy area to the side, just simply step five or 10 feet off the sidewalk to the side, have your Great Dane sit next to you. Um, you can of course allow them to of course watch the sidewalk because they may get very uncomfortable having their back turned to this strange dog passing, but just simply by completely stepping out of the way and waiting and allowing for that other dog to pass is a great way to put that physical distance between them so that way you're not forced in this close encounter and really removing that potential chance of you know your Great Dane being bitten or the other dog lunging and kind of getting tangled up with each other. That's just a really simple and straightforward way to kind of avoid this situation from occurring. Now, depending where you're walking out on the sidewalk, you may not have this luxury of being able to step off to the side. So for my second tip here to kind of avoid this situation is at least in the United States, because many of us drive on the roads kind of on the right side, we pass always on the left side. 
Because many of us are also taught to walk our dogs on our left hand, that means as we pass others on the sidewalk, we are passing with the humans on the outside and our dogs on the inside, putting them in very close proximity. Yeah, so even on a sidewalk that's a little bit wider, this is still quite literally having our two stranger dogs passing right next to each other. Uh, so one way that you can help kind of prevent this from happening is proactively take a step and move yourself to the left side of the sidewalk. So that way, instead of the dogs passing directly across from each other, it would be human to human between the two dogs. So much like the example where we actually physically stepped off the sidewalk by five or 10 feet. In this scenario, instead of letting the dogs who are strangers pass directly next to each other and try to sniff or snarl or get uncomfortable, you have put the two humans kind of in the middle of the two. Now, of course, you might annoy the other person by making them have to take a few steps to their side of the sidewalk, but this is a much better outcome than having your Great Dane get bitten or have the dogs get tangled up and also saves you in these kind of tight situations. Uh, it just really gives you an option or a route to help prevent that from occurring. For our third tip here, let's say you're approaching a dog who looks in particular either not socialized or very untrained, or they're just showing a lot of signs of being very uncomfortable. It may not be enough to simply step aside or you know, pass with the humans kind of on the inside to prevent the dogs from getting tangled up. Um, if it is an option, it may be just in your best case to simply cross the street and kind of walk on the complete opposite side. Now, sure, this gives you a very slight detour here, but unfortunately in our current environment with COVID, I think many of us are very accustomed to, you know, putting a little bit of separation where needed to uh, not only give us breathing room, but in this case also give our dogs some extra space. Now, of course, don't jaywalk, don't cross illegally, don't put yourself in more danger by crossing where there might be passing cars or the danger of that nature. But, you know, if you're in a quiet neighborhood or somewhere where it does allow and it's safe, to simply uh, cross in the street there is another great way. Now, if you don't have the luxury of crossing the street or perhaps it's not a safe area to do that, a kind of final and last resort option would be to simply turn around, take a 180 and just head the other direction. Um, there's never a scenario where my you know, walking route or my preferred route is more important than having uh, my dog Great Dane you know, avoid getting bitten by another dog here. Now, that's an easy, easy situation to say, I'll gladly modify the router. You know, perhaps we'll retrace our steps for a little bit to take a detour around to not have to pass a dog that looks very questionable here. Now, so I call that the kind of worst case scenario, but then the day we're still just out there to get a little bit of exercise, get some fresh air, enjoy our time together, uh, while all kind of, uh, you know, doing so in a safe manner uh, for the neighborhood. So those cover my four tips here for kind of, you know, making walk safer with your Great Dane in terms of passing other dogs who might be uh, uncomfortable with a dog as large as a Great Dane getting near them or maybe perhaps just haven't been socialized well enough or trained well enough. So these are just kind of four things that you can kind of use at your disposal. The great thing about all of them is they don't require any extra gear. They just simply require that you kind of pay attention a little bit on your walks and then, you know, take one of these where necessary to avoid these close encounters and make sure your Great Dane is staying safe and not being bitten or attacked by some other dog here. Now, now, of course, there are many other options as well. These are just the four that I've kind of thought of. Now, if you have any of your own, I'd love to go have you go ahead and share it down in the comments below so that way the entire community can benefit as well. Now, but with that, we hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, stay dainty, my friends. Thank mm -hmm. you.